Hi everybody, it's Tyler here at Vex Rolls checking out AG Robotics, Whoop from Texas a and This team has been absolutely phenomenal so far here at Vex Rolls for VexU. And they got a pair of fantastic robots as well too. Great tier three climb, both of them are able to do that. These robots are practically identical. A couple things you'll notice uh, that are different as they go through on this. But overall, very solid robot. Quite literally solid as it took a bad fall in our last match and still rocking really well too. So we'll be learning more about everything that's gone in these robots here from the mechanical side to a lot of the great build quality that goes into this and some software background. So let's learn more about this team coming up here on Pits and Parts. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Grow Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit recf.org and get connected. Right, let's start breaking down these robots a bit more here. Starting out with your mobile wheel clamp, tell me more about it, and then of course we'll be going to the uh, more about the chassis as well. Yeah, absolutely. So coming off the back of our state championship uh, performance, we take a look at our Mark II mobile goal clamp and we realize there's some minor issues regarding the position and orientation of the mobile goal when we clamp onto it. It's not always perfect. Right around the time we were deciding to uh, redesign our mobile goal clamp, a great video came out on YouTube going over our uh, friends from that school over there, Ghost. Um, they have this omnidirectional mobile goal clamp, which allows you to completely rotate the mobile goal and the tip of it does not move. Um, so it's always in perfect position to accept rings. Uh, we appreciate them for their contributions towards our robots. Next we go into our chassis, which had to be really specifically designed. Our dream this season was to do the ominous T3 climb. And to do that, we had to develop a chassis specifically with as much power as possible. We have 10 motor drive uh, on 2.5 inch completely custom Omni wheels and it is all directed into a PTO shifter, which completely disconnects it from the drivetrain um, into our lift. If you want to come over here, this robot, you see this is our drive, gear, our drive motor right here. We can freely move our chassis. It's in lift mode right now. That way, when we're climbing, uh, when we're running into the ladder, we aren't stalling our motors and preventing us from climbing. Overall, really well designed and built. I noticed on your gear shoot, are these just all 3D printed in house, or what is that made out of? 100% 3D printed in house. We have a sponsor additive at scale and Safe Tech. We work out of their facility. Tons of 3D printers. They let us use them. Uh, we use PLA for our wheels and TPU for the rollers. No problems at all with these custom Omni wheels. I say they look very like professional, professional level done. So nice job on that. Let's pass over to Justin and talk about the uh, lift system on the robot as well too. Uh, I mean, so much to break down with this well too. Talk to me about what the lift system means to you and how it got integrated inside the robot. So ever since the start of the competition, we were really focusing in on our tier three climb. We started out right away going into tier three development. And uh, as you can see, we have a lot going on here. We uh, started with our inside hooks, and these have these fingers right here, which allow if our robot tilts back because we're cantilevered on the corner, we reach out even further and thus can hook on. And this goes into our outside hooks, which hook on once we are raised up. And these allow us to static, uh, these are static directly connected to our chassis. And this means that uh, once we are hooked on, our robot cannot come off. The next most important thing is, of course, our hard stop. And we move our intake out of the way. It goes down all the way to the bottom, which gives us the best cantilever by uh, increasing the distance of the pivot point. And next, we take a look at our slides. We have a fully custom slide stack. We 3D printed these uh, slide spacers. They even have inserted uh, standoffs in order to add strength. And the most important thing about this, of course, is tensioning. It's always the hardest thing with slides. If we come over to Sonic here, uh, with Sonic, we have a fully custom tensioning system using surgical tubing and a spring on the bottom. So we tension our both our extension and retraction. And the best part about these is they bottom out, which means it's literally impossible to break our tensioning or stretch out our springs. Overall, this is great. Uh, something I want to ask in terms of like your climb stuff, what does the timing look like for something like that currently like on the field? How, how long until you wait to climb? Um, we take about 10 seconds to climb and we can climb whenever we want to in a match. We actively decide when it's the most advantageous point. So if we're way ahead, 
uh, we might decide not to climb, not to risk it. If we're close, we'll wait further or we'll wait longer to climb so we can maximize our point scoring. It's really a game time decision and we adapt to our environment every single time. Can you walk me through a little bit of the last match that we watched here? One of the robots uh, climbed and the other one wasn't until about another like 15 seconds after that. Can you just explain a little bit on the decision making process for that? So for that, uh, whenever we're going for high stake, that's the one that's most heavily defended and we don't have the advantage of it being the ladder side facing our uh, Alliance station. So we always try to climb there earlier to ensure we get that high stake, which is the most amount of points we can get from a tier three. And then uh, whenever we don't have anything else we can do with the robots on the field, we go for that second tier three climb, which is just more points added. And uh, it's pretty low risk because as you saw, our robots are so robust, we can go from tier three to the ground and have zero damage. Well, you hope that doesn't happen again to you, but yes. despite that, it did hold up quite well. Let's pass over to Daniel here, talk about the uh, intake. Uh, you got a very impressive intake system here. A lot of different actuations are happening with this. Uh, so walk me through how this all came together. Hello, so here is our intake. Now, the first thing that should come to mind when you see this intake, and if you take a look at our backup intake, you should realize that, hey, wait a minute, Daniel, this thing is horribly over-engineered. Why is it like this? Well, you see, this is what happens when space constraints are a thing. If you look at this area here we have to work with, it's a very small area. And so the reason why this is, is because at the beginning of Mark III, we took a look at this and we said, okay, this time, this time for sure we're gonna climb. We're gonna do everything in our power to make sure our climb team can design this right as the highest chances of success. So the intake was a lower priority. We said, you want a hard stop here? Sure, we'll do a hard stop. I'll make the intake fit under that. You want some slides here? Sure, we'll make the slides here. I'll make the intake fit between those. And so it ended up just being like this. But we surprisingly got it working. And over here, you can see our slot or our ramp. And because there's a cone, a cone that we have to ram up against to climb, these have to spread out of the way. This is our spreader mech and the ring still goes up there. Looks really good so far. Let's pass over to Preston, talk about the uh, wall sake mech. Uh, one of the things I love about Vex U is that you get to go push that boundary maybe just a little bit further than what we've seen in the V5 teams for this. Uh, so this wall sake mech is super impressive. Talk to me about uh, the different actuations that we're going through on it. Yeah, so for our wall sake mechanism, it is actually double jointed. Uh, we have two motors on it, one that controls the lower portion and one that controls the upper portion. The upper portion is uh, controlled with this belt right here. Um, what this allows us to accomplish is it, it enables better loading, better scoring on wall stakes, along with scoring the high stake. So if ever could showcase some of that. Um, it looks like our controller is disconnected, uh, but the ring is able to load in. We're able to lift it up and then dunk onto the wall stake. Furthermore, we're able to intake rings and score the high stake by going into this position right here. And this gives us, the high stake is very important in this game. Uh, so after we complete our tier three climb, we are able to effectively get the high stake. When I was watching your match uh, on last one, it looked like you really had a little bit of tolerance away from the wall stake in order to still score. How did you determine like how much distance uh, that went fully into this in regards to like how far away you could be to score a wall stake? That just came down to um, how much we wanted as much reach as possible while fitting within our space. Uh, more reach we're able to come at from different angles. So at, by giving an extra reach, we do have to stand a little bit back in order to score effectively and head on. Drew, lots to talk about in terms of uh, software on this robot here. So, uh, you know, we got a lot of macros going on, uh, auto clamp, color sort. What do you want to start with first? Uh, yeah, so we actually use every uh, button on this controller. Uh, we have a ton of macros for our drivers. Um, one of our uh, most important ones is our auto clamp. So if we just tap this R1 button here, it will uh, use that sensor to detect the presence of a MOGO and clamp it. Uh, and that also automatically sorts our conveyors, so um, uh, the rings will move up. We also have color sort, so if you come over here, you can see our auton selector. Uh, we can select between red, blue, or skills, uh, and correspondingly, it will uh, sort the rings. So right now we're in red mode, so it'll reject blue rings. Uh, it'll accept red rings, and those will just go right in the MoGo. Uh, the blue ring gets kind of thrown off. Um, we use the, um, could you hold this? Uh, we use uh, an optical sensor right here and uh, green backing behind it. 
to detect the rings because we uh, discovered during our testing that our maroon shirts were throwing off the color sensor. We didn't want that to happen in match play. We didn't want other colored robots or other team shirts or whatever to throw off our uh, optical. And so we decided to put a green backing just because it's a uh, high contrast color, very easy to differentiate from the red and blue of the rings. So looking at this from a softer wise, is there anything else coming in the VEX rules you've been like, hey, I wish we could have implemented this or done this going in, or you've been pretty happy with the overall package? Uh, I mean, there have been a few macros that uh, we tried to implement that we just couldn't get to work. Uh, particularly auto deploy the hard stop. Um, we implemented that at one point, uh, but it was causing too many issues. So we ended up going to a manual deploy where uh, if you press R2 with the intake retracted, it will, um... but we do have a lockout mechanism to prevent the intake and hard stop from deploying at the same time because that uh, broke the intake once. Everett, we got to look and see what a full cycle is on this robot here. So walk me through each of the stages here going through this. Give us a little bit of narration on how this awesome machine works. Yeah, so I'm Everett. I'm the driver for uh, Shadow, our 24-inch robot. Uh, so I'm just going to walk through all the steps to get ourselves to a Tier 3 high-stake uh, scoring. Uh, the first step in this is activating our load position for our Roger Roger mechanism. So it intakes the ring, it gets loaded up, it goes up to this preset position. And then once we do that, we retract our intake, we go up to the cone, and then we activate our lift, or our PTO, and we go up. We use our inside hooks to clamp over the bar, and then we use our hard stop to go down, and we pull up, we use our outside hooks to stabilize ourselves um, stationary so that the base stays into the next tier. And then once these are stabilized, we unclamp, uh, open our clamp, go up, clamp onto the next tier, pull it back down, and we repeat the process until we get up to the high stake. Once we're at the high stake, unlike a traditional robot um, that has a Lady Brown mechanism, if we had a bar that went all the way back here, it'd go over the high stake and miss it. So that's where Preston's Roger Roger mechanism design really comes into play uh, in terms of utility for the high stake mechanism. So once we're up at the high stake, we press a button that brings the ring actually to right here, and that gets us a very secure high stake. One more uh, <clears throat> mechanism that this robot has that we actually haven't shown yet and uh, we will be showing in the eliminations more than likely is that our lift mechanism clamp can actually de-score uh, a high stake if another robot were to beat us there. So there's a lot of utility and strategy that goes into the design of this robot. We wanted to make a very robust design that could adapt to the dynamics of this competition um, as it is very changing and very reactionary as a, of a game. Um, yeah, and that, that's the uh, entire process to get high stake. Thank you very much. Yeah, this is Agri Robotics, uh, Team Whoop. Absolutely phenomenal performance so far and a great breakdown of what all this is. So as we approach playoffs, we wish you best of luck going into that. I know you got high aspirations for that, but really appreciate you taking time to tell us more about these awesome machines. Good luck the rest of the way. Giga Maggies. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell to stay up to date on future fun videos. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Girl Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit recf.org and get connected.